So we need to clear up some confusion here within the free and open source software community. There are still way too many people that think that free software or open source software, or as the term I often use, free and open source software, they think these terms mean that the software is free of charge, that it's basically cheap software. It's no cost software, a software that you get for free for no charge. You didn't have to pay a price for it. And no, that is actually not what any of those three terms actually mean. Free software, open source software, free and open source software, they have absolutely nothing to do with the cost of the software. When we talk about free software, we are talking about freedom, the freedom of you being able to do what you want to do with that software. It has absolutely nothing to do with price. And the reason I wanted to address this today is because I put out a video the other day where I took a quick look at the recent release of Zero Linux with the GNOME desktop environment and this distribution is called Zero G. And the creator of Zero Linux is uh, Dark Zero, Steve. You guys know who Steve is. He often appears on my uh, patrons my podcast uh, you know that I do at the end of every month. And he charges for ISOs that he builds of Zero Linux. And people in the comments were saying, oh, that's crazy. He's actually charging for, quote, free software. That's wrong. That's immoral. He shouldn't be doing that. And people were trashing him. People were trashing me saying, you know, I shouldn't put it on camera or, you know, in the video. I said, hey, I think it's great that Steve is charging for his ISOs. I think more people that are putting out free and open source software should charge for their time. And people were like, no, DT, you're wrong for saying something like that. That's immoral. That's against the ideals of free software and open source software and free and open source software. And no, it's absolutely not against any of those things. I, I, we need to address actually what is free software and open source software. Let's actually read the definition. So let's start with the free software definition because that's where this whole thing began, right? That's where free software began and later, you know, open source, free and open source, you know, all of this really it was Richard Stallman in the 1970s, 1980s, created the free software movement. He created the Free Software Foundation. He created the GNU Project. And there is a free software definition. There are only four lines to the free software definition. So the four essential freedoms is what these are called. And nowhere in these four freedoms is cost or price ever mentioned. Free software is nothing about price. Every time Richard Stallman speaks from the 1970s, 1980s until today, anytime he speaks and he speaks often about free software, he makes it a point to tell people this is about freedom, not about cost. It's OK to charge for your software. If you go watch any lengthy uh, speech or anything that Richard Stallman has ever given, he hammers this point home constantly. Free software has nothing to do with price. So let's go over the four freedoms. The first freedom is the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. So this means anybody can use the software. So regardless of nationality, race, gender, religion, you know, nobody is prohibited from using this program and you can use it for any purpose you deem fit. Nobody can restrict you. So that, again, it's about freedom. The next one is freedom one, which is the freedom to study how the program works. So this is basically, I need access to the source code. So any program that I get, if it's free software, there has to be source code available for this that I can go and view. The source code has to be public. It has to be uh, freely available. It can't be locked behind a paywall or anything. And I, it can't be uh, unnecessarily burdensome for me to get that source code. So typically uh, these days, because of the internet, it has to be published somewhere on GitHub, GitLab, you know, something like that. The next freedom, freedom two, is the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help others. So basically I should have the option to modify the code to my liking. So again, you know, because the source code is out there, I get to see the source code, but now I also get to modify the source code and redistribute copies, uh, share it with my friends and family, should I choose. And in fact, it specifies that in Freedom 3, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others. And that is it. That is all free software is. It's very simple. Anybody can use the software for any purpose and then they need access to the source code and they're allowed to modify it and redistribute it 
if they want to. So no mention of price, you know, or cost. And Richard Stallman, again, he hammers this home all the time. It's not about free of price. In fact, Richard Stallman charges for things and has for decades, you know, back in the day, I think he was uh, charging people for some of his, uh, uh, like, distributions of Emacs, where he'd build Emacs and put it on a disk and drives or, you know, wh whatever media he was actually putting those things on back in the 1980s or whatever. And, you know, he would charge people for that obviously because it's costing him something to make that and also he probably wanted to charge a little bit for his time and effort you know make a few bucks on it but that didn't mean that emacs wasn't free software you absolutely could go get the source code for emacs somewhere and you know you could compile it yourself you could build a binary of it yourself if you knew how right but you know if you want Richard Stallman to do that for you and put it on a disc and send it to you. Heck, of course he's going to charge for it. I know I would. And this has been kind of a standard thing that a lot of people do with free software. It's been around for decades is, you know, I'm going to charge you for, you know, building a package, you know, myself. You know, if you want me to actually build a binary or in Steve's case with Zero Linux building an ISO, you know what, you're going to pay me a little money for that. But hey, if you want to build it yourself, all the source code's out there for you. You, know, you can do it. It, and there's nothing preventing you from doing it, but this is kind of a normal thing. Really big programs that you know often do this. You guys probably know Ardour. Ardour is a digital audio a piece of software, free and open source software, right? They have a version that they actually charge money for because they build the binary package. And if you want that pre-built binary package, you're going to pay Ardour for that. But if you want to build it yourself, the source code is all available for you. You can go build that particular version of Ardour yourself if you know how to and you want to take the time. But if you want to save a little time and just get their pre-built version of it, their binary of it, pay them a few bucks, you'll get the binary. And that's perfectly okay. There is nothing against that. There's nothing immoral about that. That is perfectly in line with the four essential freedoms regarding free software. So hopefully now that we've taken a look at the free software definition, you know that free software has absolutely nothing to do with free of cost. That is not what we mean by free software. When we talk about free software, we're really talking about freedom software is really what we're talking about. Matter of fact, it should have been called freedom software because that would clear up a lot of the confusion. But again, that's the free software definition. Let's go look at the open source definition. So let's go to the open source initiative website. And there is an open source definition that's very similar to the free software definition, except it's a little bit more wordy. They have 10 criteria but it's just a longer version of the four freedoms is essentially all it is. If we take a look at what open source software is, you can see free redistribution. So, you know, I can modify it and then redistribute it. So that was one of the freedoms with free software. Same thing here with open source software source code. Source code has to be freely available. I should be able to find the source code of this program and then modify it and then, you know, redistribute it, derived works. You know, I can make a derivative of it. You can see uh, number five here no discrimination against persons or groups so anybody can use the software for any reason no discrimination against fields of endeavor again that's kind of you know the same thing but it's a little bit more wordy right it's the only difference between the free software definition and the open source definition but very similar is that there is no real mention of cost or price in the open source definition, except in one place, source code. The source code must be available, preferably on the internet without charge, right? You can't hide the source code because that's part of open source software. It was also part of free software is whether you charge me for a pre-built binary or pre-built ISO, the source code has to be out there somewhere for me to go and actually view it, uh, get it myself, modify it, redistribute it, yada, yada, yada. So you can't hide the source code. That's the main thing. You can't charge people for source code. If you start doing that, then you are violating free software and open source software. Then that program would no longer qualify as either free software or open source software. So now we've cleared up those two terms, free software open source software, but I know some of you are going to be like, hey, DT, but you always use the term free and open source software. And I know that people sometimes interpret that to mean free as in charge plus open source software. Well, that's not actually what most people associate free and open source software with. If you actually just do a simple Google search, I know it's it's a lot to ask, you know, people 
you know, it's uh, I had to type like seven words in Google. What is free and open source software? And then their little AI overview, you know, Google's little AI uh, Gemini, you know, free and open source software or FOSS, right, is what we often call it, is software that is available for anyone to use, modify, redistribute with its source code publicly accessible, allowing users to expect, change, improve the software without restrictions, yada, yada, yada. But here... And it essentially means the software is free to use in terms of freedom, not necessarily price. Straight from Google, right? If you're if you were confused about this, and there were a lot of people in the comment section of this video confused because they were saying, yeah, you can't charge for free software, you can't charge for open source software, and people were like, hey, you're wrong. There, there were a lot of you guys that rightly knew what free software and open source software was, and you're like, hey, you're wrong. Free software. It can be paid software, right? And people are like, no, no. It's like, just do a Google search. If you would have spent 10 seconds rather than arguing in the comment section of my video, if you'd done a simple Google search, what is free software? What is open source software? Google's AI spits out the answer and it immediately talks about it has nothing to do with price. It would have told you, but you didn't ask. But you know, it doesn't really make me angry, the laziness of people. What makes me angry about some of the people that are all up in arms about uh, people charging for free and open source software is that these people not only are misguided, but the real reason they're upset is because they feel like they are owed free as in cost software. They feel entitled, right? They refuse to pay for software. And that is really what has been holding us back as far as the free and open source software community. That's what's been holding us back for decades is that so many people within our community think it should be free of cost software. They, they know that's not actually what those terms mean, but that's what they want it to mean. They really don't care about the freedom aspect. They would rather it all be about the dollar amount aspect and no that's not why we're here that if you want free as in charge there's actually a term for software that is free of cost we call it freeware you've probably heard that term before freeware that is a term that's commonly used to refer to software that is free of charge now most of that is also going to be proprietary software that's free of charge. But, you know, you could also refer to open source software that's free of charge as freeware. But typically, we're not going to use the term freeware when we're talking about open source software. Usually freeware, it's kind of implied that it's proprietary software. It's just free of cost proprietary software. Yeah, but getting back to some of the entitled people on the Internet that are all upset that they have to pay for software, get over it. You don't have to use it. And matter of fact, there were people in the comments section, I'm not paying for this Linux distribution. Okay, nobody cares. Then that's like me going to the store and I'm shopping. And you know, 99.99% .99 of the things inside the store, I'm not there to buy. I don't go around and telling people, hey, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying this. I'm not. Nobody cares what you're not buying. Like we all make decisions every single day about what we purchase and what we're not interested in purchasing. And nobody really cares. And the fact that you feel like you need to yell it on the Internet, like you're so important, right? Like, you know, people really want to know what I'm not buying today. Uh, man, but you guys, I just need to turn off the camera. Peace, guys.